Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting function. One over the square root of tangent x. When I saw this problem first, I was like, what the heck? Can you even integrate this? You probably remember I've done square root of tangent x a while ago. And this time we're going to be handling one over square root of tangent x, which you can also write as the square root of cotangent x, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem easily by way of an interesting technique. All right, great. So if you haven't checked out my other channel, A plus BI, I have a channel that is focused on complex numbers. Go ahead and check out A plus BI. I'm sure you're going to like it and let me know what you think. I also started new membership options. Go ahead and check them out and support the channel by becoming a member. You can just click the join button and go from there. And let me know what you think about the membership options because I changed them. Great, so we have the following integral, the square root of tangent x, but it's in the denominator. No big deal. It's not going to make a huge difference, but we're going to use an awesome method that I really like, and that's called, did you guess? Substitution. Yes, it starts with an S. So how do you use substitution, though? There's, you know, different ways to do it. For example, we can just call tangent x u or anything else, or we can call square root of tangent x u. And that's what we're going to do, actually. So set u equal to square root of tangent x. What does that mean? It just means that u squared is equal to tangent x. Great. That's good to know. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to differentiate both sides to find du in terms of dx or vice versa. So we need to find a way to replace dx with something du that's important with substitution because you have to change everything. If you had a definite integral, you would also have to change the upper and lower limits or boundaries, whatever they're called. Now, if you do the d stuff on both sides, you're going to get 2u. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. I'm pretty sure today is someone's birthday, actually. One of my parents, uh, one of my students' parents, uh, it was his birthday, I didn't know. Anyways, 2u du is equal to secant squared x dx. Great, so we differentiate both sides and add the d's, and now we have the following equation. How does this help at all? Well, we have the tangent x here and the secant squared, so they're related, aren't they? We probably, or you probably know that secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. So there's a way to actually turn this into something with u. How? We know that tangent x is u squared. So what is tangent squared x? Well, square both sides, you get u to the fourth power. Wow, a quartic. Awesome. So secant squared becomes 1 plus tangent squared, which is 1 plus u to the fourth power. Amazing. Now... We have this equation, but we do need to replace dx with something. And dx isn't totally by itself, and we also have an x term on the right-hand side. But don't worry, you can replace this with 1 plus u to the fourth. So you get 2u du equals 1 plus u to the fourth dx. Now you can isolate dx. Isn't that beautiful? dx can be written as 2u over 1 plus u to the fourth du. Don't worry about this because this is going to simplify. It's going to be just amazing. Now, let's go ahead and start with what we were given, dx over the square root of tangent x. What am I going to replace dx with? 2u over 1 plus u to the fourth du. But before I do the du, let's go ahead and replace square root of tangent x with something. Square root of tangent x is u, so this is 1 over u. So I'm going to multiply by 1 over u and then include the du in there. And now this is what we have. Awesome. D U cancels out. I have a 2, which I can easily take care of. Don't worry, we can leave it inside as well. But this is what we have so far. 2 divided by U to the 4th plus 1, DU. The reason why I wrote the U to the 4th first is because I'm about to turn this mathematically into something else. What is that thing called? It's called partial fractions. And I think it's amazing. Now, we're going to go ahead and do the following. Take u to the fourth plus 1 and write it as u to the fourth plus 2u squared plus 1, which makes it a perfect square. Take a look at it. Isn't that perfect? And then, of course, I have to subtract the extra term u squared, 2u squared. Okay? It's like 2u times u. Okay. 
Now, this is what I have. This part is u squared plus 1 quantity squared, and this is root 2u quantity squared. So what I have is called a difference of two squares. I think there are two super important things in math. I believe this is one of them, difference of two squares. The second one would probably be the Pythagorean theorem. If you know others, number three, number four, number five, you can name them in the comment section down below. Great, that really helps with the algorithm, you know, so I had to mention it. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Great, so this is what we have in our denominator, but guess what? This can be factored, like I said earlier, uh, difference of two squares. I'm gonna write the, this one first because it's gonna go in the middle and write the plus one last. Remember, this is always gonna be plus one, but the term in the middle is just gonna change like this. So that's, I know it's kind of hard to believe, right? It's like, are you serious? Like, are they equivalent? Yes. If you don't believe that, go ahead and distribute, multiply these two together, and you're gonna realize that it's u to the fourth plus one. That's the beauty of math. Sometimes out of chaos, we get structure, okay? And I'm not exaggerating, am I? So here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna use our superpowers with partial fractions. By the way, these superpowers are called Wolfram Alpha. That's one of them. So we're gonna go ahead and factor this like that, right? So that's gonna be my denominator. And my denominator actually, oops, I forgot the U. My denominator is gonna be split up. So let me go ahead and erase this, because this is what I have. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring it to the left. So let me go ahead and move this here. Oopsies. And now I'm gonna go ahead and split it up into two pieces. A, U plus B. And I'll tell you why I picked that. Uh, so this expression is gonna be one of my denominators. And the other denominator is just gonna be the other term. Now, why did I use a u plus b? When the denominator is second degree or quadratic, the numerator has to be one less, which is linear. I mean, I'm not saying a is not always, a is not always non-zero, but a can also be zero in some cases. But we have to assume that. And this is not easily factorable. So if this was like u squared plus five u plus six, I could factor it. I would. Even if you didn't, you would still get the right answer, by the way. But anyways, this is how we can break it down. So our goal is to, by making a common denominator, we should be able to find the values of A, B, C, D. But why do we have Wolfram Alpha, right? To do all the boring work. So from here, A equals 1 over root 2, B equals 1 over root 2, C equals negative 1 over root 2, and D equals 1 over root 2. How convenient, right? Now, by plugging these in, one of the pieces which is this one, is gonna look like the following. You're gonna have something like one over root two on the outside, and inside you're gonna have u plus one because they both have one over root two as a, uh, as a coefficient. We're gonna have the first denominator, u squared plus root two u plus one. And then of course we have the du at the end. And you might be thinking, wow, this looks like a, this looks like a crazy integral, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's not too hard, look. Here's the trick. Whenever you get a quadratic in the denominator, let me repeat, not in the numerator, in the denominator, you should try factoring. I mean, numerator can work too, but denominators are worse. It's a worse scenario, like worse, 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 worse. So you can write it as a, like kind of like a complete square type of thing. So I can kind of write this as u squared plus root two u plus root two over two squared. This is gonna be u plus root two over two squared. Do you see what I'm talking about? I hope so. But this is one half, so I do need another one half, which is weird, right? To make one. Make sense? So we'll kind of split the one into two pieces. Now that's the denominator, and but that's important. You know why? Because this is gonna determine the me next method. Is there a next method? Of course, we're not done with the integration. So what we need to do now is to deal with this integral. Don't worry, I'm not gonna work it out fully, completely. I'll show you the method because the rest is kind of like more uh, busy work and I'm lazy. But here's what you need to do. Set this equal to root two over two tangent theta. And I'll tell you why. When you set u plus root two over two equal to root two over two tangent theta, when you square this, you, you're gonna square both sides, right? You're gonna get one over two tangent squared theta. And when you add one to both sides, or one half to both sides, I'm sorry, add one half to both sides, you're gonna get our expression in the denominator, 
it's just going to be one half times tangent squared plus one if you factor out the one half, but it's just going to be secant squared theta. Beautiful. But what about du? Easy. Differentiate both sides, you're going to get du. Root two over two is a constant, so it'll stay. If you differentiate tangent, you're going to get secant squared again. This is the beauty of this method because those tangents, secant squared, are going to cancel out. So you're going to get something like this, okay? You're going to get an integral that looks like root 2 over 2 tangent theta minus root 2 over 2 plus 1 over 1 half secant squared theta. And here you're going to get root 2 over 2 secant squared theta d theta. And ta-da! These two are going to cancel out. The twos are also going to cancel out. You're going to end up with a root 2 if you distribute it. That gives you a 1, so on and so forth. Anyways, the rest should be fairly easy because, come on, how do you integrate tangent? You probably know that, right? If In case you didn't, I'll show you the method real quick. So you're going to write it as sine over cosine. Of course, this is not the only way to do it. One way to do it. And then you can go ahead and call this t, since we already used the u. If t is cosine theta, dt would be negative sine theta d theta. So sine theta d theta would be negative dt. So this would be negative dt over t, which is ln. You can write it as negative ln of absolute value of t plus blah, blah, blah. And since t is cosine, you can just replace t with cosine and go from there. So it's the negative ln cosine. You've got to think about it. You still need to convert theta to x world. So, and how do you do that? You can go from here, turn it into u first, and then you turn the u into the x. And the relationship between u and x is actually fairly simple. u is just square root of tangent x. But instead of me showing you all the work, which is going to take a long, long time, I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you. But guess what? As a bonus, I'm going to show you the answer to the final integral. Are you ready? Ta-da-da-da. Yes, this is what it looks like. And let me tell you something. When I asked this question to AI first, it said, oh, there's no elementary way to express this integral, blah, blah, blah. And I said, the, yes, there is an elementary way to express it, and Wolfram Alpha knows it. I didn't say the second part, but it just spit out the answer like, oh, yeah, you're right, sorry, I'm wrong, and blah, blah. You know, they just hallucinate. What can you do? It's just AI. It's not a human being. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.